Hello, beautiful souls. It is Andrea with Enlightening Offerings. I wanted to come on here today because there has been a video percolating in my subconscious for about four or five months now, and I was missing an integral piece to it. <clears throat> and today it hit me. Today I realized what piece was missing, and that was vulnerability. Um, and the way that I wanted to come and share this message with you was in the most vulnerable physical position I can think of. And that is for me, left leg forward pigeon pose. So I'm on my mat and I am in that position. And I actually, it already was working because I had to do some deep breathing before I could even push the button to start this. Um, anyone who's had a pretty steady yoga practice has heard the term of the, or the concept that we, that our hips are our emotional junk drawers. <clears throat> and we hold so much trauma and baggage and experiences, both good and bad, in here. And I remember in yoga almost feeling like I was having anxiety attacks in this position and how hard it was and how I had to sink in and surrender into that vulnerable feeling, knowing that I was safe and held. And I realized that this year, 2022, I am going to coin my own personal year of strength through surrender. And feel free, if you have felt that also, or if anything that I'm about to talk about resonates, feel free to take that on too, because it, I know from experience talking with other people, it's not just me. Um, some of the things I may bring up or... Uh, use examples of or state in this video might be triggering to some people. Um, and I just want you to know that I'm, I'm speaking these words through love and um, holding this space of support and offering these words for help and assistance as we all traverse life. Now, <clears throat> control. I think that in the last two years, we can all agree, two and a half years, that we have way less control over everything in life than we thought we did. Um, we, we walked through life feeling like we had control of our experiences, our jobs, our family connections, our food sources, for the most part. I'm, I, of course, I'm speaking from Western civilization, from a, I, I don't experience food um, worries or scarcity, <clears throat> but for the most part, we were able to know that we were safe and taken care of and felt like we had control over that. Well, then COVID hit, right? We had no toilet paper. Like, what in the world? And it quickly showed us that we don't have control over Jack. We, not only are most people in our society living one or two paychecks away from poverty, but society is living one or two months away from a lot more scary things than that, because at least there's social services available right now that can help you if that happens. And this is not a fear mongering video. My point is that I used the last two years to focus on what I could control, which is literally just me. I focused on myself in that I I went through two very large training programs. I became a healer. I can do life activations. I can do full spirit activations. I um, I went through therapy. Actually, you know, for the first time in my entire life, I went through straight up consistent therapy because there were some things that came up when the world shut down and it was all quiet and I didn't have my distractions that I could not avoid facing anymore. And I'm not saying these things to humble brag or talk about how amazing I am, but 
I am very proud of myself for taking that opportunity that the world was gifted in a weird way um, to work on what I could control, which is, again, literally just myself. So this video, as <clears throat> I'm like halfway through it already, is, is mostly to talk about you and healing you and how we struggle with that sometimes and how we, we avoid facing things. But did you know that sometimes you don't have to identify what the problem is if you just wanna let go of that baggage that you're holding onto in your hips? You don't have to dissect everything down. Like, yes, I went to counseling. I knew exactly what my problem was. I needed help figuring out how to deal with it. But you have people that, that find home and comfort in counseling for decades and still are going back about the same original issues. Did you know that you don't have to carry that? That you can, you can rest your beautiful overtaxed nervous system without spending countless hours and thousands and thousands of dollars talking about the same situation over and over again with the same person. There's this beautiful poem and I have it somewhere and it just talks about she just let go. One day she just let go and she didn't announce it from the mountaintops and she didn't ask permission, she just let it go. And that's that's the point, I think, of this year of strength through surrender. Um, the strength card in the tarot is a really good reference to, um, to look up or meditate on. And that's that surrendering to that inner beast and recognizing that it's through love that we can let things go and that we are safe. And there's a lot of talk for decades, maybe centuries, about, well, maybe a century, about women empowerment, right? And and finding that that strong woman and girl power and all of that, and that is wonderful. But I think we're really kind of, as a whole, missing the point of feminine empowerment. It's not gender specific that our society, that humanity needs to work on. It is the energetics of raising the feminine strength to match where the masculine has been for thousands of years. And, and we need that balance. We need that sacred masculine to match that divine feminine, not toxic forms of either. And that doesn't mean me as a woman becoming stronger because I am strong, but I have lived most of my life through masculine strength through to-do lists, goals, have to find the finish line, have to be really good at, have to be better than others at. And that is all very masculine concepts. Those are all very masculine concepts and energies. The, the world right now, this strength through surrender year, this, this acknowledgement of the fact that we can't control shit except ourselves, calls for us to raise that feminine strength, that, that feminine side that every person, regardless of gender or body, has, and increase her. And the way we do that is through strength, through surrender, and deep, deep love. You can't fight your way as a woman. You can't fight your way to orgasm. It's, it, you have to surrender into it. And if there's a better example than of, of finding feminine strength than that, I don't know one. But it is the most vulnerable, the most open, raw, exposed moment that you can experience. Right? Am I wrong? Men, I don't know what it's like for you. So if you have 
Any comments, feel free to list them below. If it's different or the same, I'm not sure. But for women, I know it's through surrender. So we as a society can surrender to our traumas, surrender to the pain, feel the feels, right? As, as whereas men feel what, or how do I say this? It's more about feeling what feels good on their body for that feminine strength. Let's try to feel what feels good inside our body. Can you imagine pulling your consciousness into your skin to, to, to just rest and feel the tingles of energy flowing through your body to, to float through your blood system, to have an idea and then imagine feeling that spark go down and just wiggle your little toe. Going within and surrendering to what feels good inside your body, not just luxurious clothing or uh, bubble bath. You know, those are all yummy things, but feeling what's good inside. And as far as like calming our neurological system and releasing the trauma and the dramas and the pain that we carry, a lot of people carry as a a victim armband. Like, oh, this happened to me. This creates my identity. I'm never letting this go. I have this amazing little trick that brings up the same vulnerability and anxiety that the left leg forward pigeon pose brings. And I'll link the, <clears throat> the YouTube video below. But you just interlace your fingers behind your neck and you look forward. And then you turn your eyes to the left as far as you can for 30 seconds and really breathe into that vulnerability feeling. Do the same on the right for 30 seconds and do that every day for a week and that feeling that it brings up will release. And that is affecting your vagus nerve and releasing the, the trauma impact that your traumas have had on your body. And you will feel released and lighter and stronger in yourself Really, Brene Brown's Daring Greatly, I'm delving into for the first time. I've watched her podcasts and TED Talks and stuff over the years, but I haven't read her books. This one is amazing and I highly recommend it. The quote that impacted me this morning the most was, vulnerability sounds like truth and feels like courage. Yes, be vulnerable. Be vulnerable with yourself. Set your space. Make yourself know that you are safe and then dive into the feelings inside your body because that's all you can control is yourself, your body, what you carry forward into the world and therefore what you share with the world. No one else can, can control that and you cannot control anyone else's and any sort of hallucination that we can is just that. So I know this was a lot. <clears throat> I hope it made any sense. I did go over on time about three minutes longer than I like to do my videos, but I hope it serves. Please reach out with any questions. I'll link that YouTube video and that poem below. Um, may you find your own inner strength through surrendering into yourself. Blessings to you all.